Hello and welcome to this talk, which is about GUN IMS, which stands for Intramuscular Stimulation. GUN IMS is a treatment, a dry needling treatment for relief of persistent pain. My name is Lyndall Solomons and I'm the director of the UBC GUN IMS program at UBC in Vancouver, Canada. The goals for this talk are for you to understand the GUN IMS model of persistent musculoskeletal pain, what the model is, how it's different from other models, uh, for you to learn how dry needles help with persistent pain, what do we know dry needles do, and for you to find out who GUN IMS treatment could help, so what sort of problems is GUN IMS expected to be helpful for. You can't really speak about gun IMS without talking about Dr. Chit Chan Gun, who is the person who developed this model. He was born in Malaysia in 1931. He earned his medical degree at Cambridge in 1953, emigrated to Canada in 1966 and still lives here in Vancouver. And the IMS technique began in 1973. The UBC GUN IMS program has three arms, research, teaching and practice. The teaching program for GUN IMS has run continuously in Vancouver since 1994 and GUN IMS has been part of the UBC Faculty of Medicine since 2011. The GUN IMS model of persistent musculoskeletal pain is based on Cannon and Rosenbluth's law of denervation supersensitivity, law being different from theory because a law has been demonstrated to be true. Uh, this law uh, was first published, the work of that, this was first published in 1949 and the scientific language around it is that when in a series of efferent neurons a unit is destroyed, an increased irritability to chemical agents develops in the isolated structure or structures, the effect being maximal in the part directly denervated. So what this means in everyday language is that persistent pain can happen when the nerves to the painful tissue have been mechanically or physically stressed. Mechanical stress to the nerve root, so this is the large nerve that branches off the spinal cord, is the part of the nervous system we're most interested in in gun IMS. The nerve root can be compressed, so pinched, tractioned, stretched or angulated, a combination really of combination and traction in a particular part of the uh, vertebral column, the, the intervertebral frame, and I'll talk a little bit more about that. But the important thing here is that the nerve root contains three types of nerve fibres, motor, sensory, autonomic. I'll, I'll speak about those a little bit more too. And what happens when this nerve root is mechanically or physically stressed is there's a pattern of dysfunction that develops along the nerve root path, all the tissues that nerve root supplies, its segment in all three parts of the nervous system. And we can see that when we examine people physically. So in the intervertebral foramen, there is just enough room for the nerve. When the space is reduced, it, it physically affects the nerve in a, in, a, in a detrimental way. So when there's less room for that nerve root in the intervertebral foramen, in the bony tunnel that is formed between to each vertebra and the vertebra and the vertebra bone below, the nerve root in this space can be compressed, tractioned or angulated. So spondylosis, which is generally seen to be a degenerative condition of the spine that most of uh, us as human beings are susceptible to, whether it's from postural issues, uh, genetic issues, injury, we end up with reduced space for the nerve root in the intervertebral foramen. And prespondylosis is a term that Dr. Gunn coined to describe the situation where the nerve root is being adversely affected physically in this space before the changes even start to be observable on imaging or in any other way. And, and the posture that we um, adopt as upright creatures is, is a potentially one of the ways that this intervertebral frame and space can be reduced when we don't stand with correct posture and the vertebral bodies are not stacked correctly one on top of the other. 
So the nerve root that, that we've just been talking about, when this dysfunctions, the term that has has been coined with this is segmental neurological dysfunction. We have 31 pairs of nerve roots in, in the human spinal cord, so 31 segments with these motor, sensory and autonomic fibres. Motor fibres carry nerve signals out or away from the brain. They make muscles contract. The sensory nerves bring nerve signals back in towards the brain. They allow us to feel sensations, including pain. And our autonomic nervous system is an unconscious system that regulates bodily functions. So the motor dysfunction, these nerve signals out away from the brain are particularly helpful for us to observe. Clinically, we can feel taut bands in muscles. They're a key finding in gun IMS. And as well as these taut bands that are often very tender, the muscles, when they form these bands, they're contracting, so they actually become shortened. And so this is a really key finding in gun IMS. So we talk about shortened muscle syndromes. This is one of Dr. Gunn's phrases. So the idea that not only are the muscles adversely affected when they develop these tight tender bands and they shortened, but these shortened muscles also deliver stress to the tissues that they attach to or pass over. So they contraction and, and pull on tendons, fascial attachments, periosteum, bones, so that the bones don't align correctly. They can compress or squash bursi joints, nerves. And so we have these shortened muscle syndromes, tendinopathies, enthesopathies, tenosynovitis, fasciitis, periostitis, bursitis, osteoarthritis, and nerve compression syndrome. So all these problems that we so commonly see developing in people can be put under this umbrella of a shortened muscle syndrome. So dry needles induce a local twitch response. It's when the muscle contracts involuntarily when you insert the dry needle into a muscle. And in the tissue that we insert the needle, we see reduced pain, we see reduced tenderness, we see reduced biochemicals that are associated with pain, and we see less of a spontaneous electrical activity in the tight bands, so the tight bands are reduced. And these things happen not only locally in the tissues that we needle, but also remotely in tissues that weren't needled. So bilaterally in the tissue on the other side of the body, uh, the same tissue on the other side, but also in other parts of the body as well. We also see that dry needles release these tight bands. They restore length to shorten muscle, so we release these painful tight muscle bands. And when we can release these taut muscle bands, we can see this can directly affect all these shortened muscle syndromes that we spoke about. So who can gun IMS treatment help? Where is gun IMS indicated for shortened muscle syndromes, persistent myofascial syndromes, all those muscle joint tendon, bursal, fascial, neural, biomechanical problems we spoke about, but also where we see segmental nervous system dysfunction. So not just a local muscle trigger point, but, but groups of tissues that all have the same nerve supply. The, the, the local muscle trigger points will be affected as well, but, but, but we're talking more globally in our approach with gun IMS. So thank you, ISP, for asking me to speak about gun IMS. I hope you all learned a bit more about the gun IMS model what dry needles do and the sorts of problems that gun IMS can help.